guys welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here my name is april and this is another in the core concepts video series for med surge nursing now today's topic is going to be cognition now as a reminder this is a back to the basic series in which we really are just trying to understand what is going on inside the body so that we can better assess and manage clients with acute and chronic conditions so when we think about cognition it is defined as complex integration of mental processes and intellectual function for the purposes of reasoning, learning, memory, and personality. So let's further define some of these concepts. Reasoning is a high-level thinking process that allows an individual to make decisions or judgments. Memory is the ability to retain and recall information for learning or to recall past experiences. And personality is the way an individual feels and behaves and often is based on how we think. There are three interrelated concepts to cognition. There is fluid and electrolyte balance, gas exchange, and perfusion, all of which we have already talked about in this core concept series. So if you missed those videos or if you'd like a refresher, they will be linked in the description box below. But each of these interrelated concepts can result in impaired cognition. So as an adult, we either have an intact or an adequate cognitive function, or we have an inadequate cognitive function. Now, some examples of inadequate functioning are delirium, which is an acute disorder, or dementia, which is a chronic disorder. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the difference between delirium and dementia on the next slide. And these are the two most common cognition disorders in older adults. Now, adults can also have delayed intellectual functioning or can suffer from amnesia caused by brain trauma. Now, we know that delayed intellectual functioning is often the result of a cognitive disorder, but could also be a traumatic brain injury or another acute health problem, such as a stroke. There are two ways that cognition is categorized. So we have global disorders, and those examples are dementia and delirium, or we can have focal disorders, which is amnesia. So as we do a deep dive into dementia and delirium, it's important to understand both the description, the onset, the duration, what causes them, are they reversible, and how we manage them both medically and from a nursing care perspective. So dementia is going to be chronic and progressive cognitive decline, and that's really the big difference between dementia and delirium. Dementia is chronic, whereas delirium is acute, and it often fluctuates, and it is usually caused by something that is treatable. So acute and fluctuating state of confusion. The onset for dementia, again, remember this is a chronic progressive disorder, so the onset is slow. It can take months to years for dementia to reach its uh, full severity. Delirium, um, on the other hand, however, has a rapid onset, anywhere from hours to definitely less than a month for the onset of that acute fluctuating state of confusion. Now, what causes dementia? There's a lot of research being done about that. We're not 100% for sure in every patient what the cause is, but we do think that maybe there may be, uh, may be some familial or genetic tendencies, and then there could also be some chemical exposures that do cause dementia. Delirium, on the other hand, is often, especially in older adults, caused by a surgical procedure, medications that they're on, an infection, and then Dementia, of course, is not reversible. It is a chronic progressive cognitive decline, whereas on the other hand, delirium is usually reversible. Once we treat the underlying cause, the delirium typically resolves. So that brings us to medical management. With dementia, we are just treating the symptoms, and oftentimes we are using cholinesterase inhibitors. And then for delirium, we are treating the underlying cause. If it was a reaction to a medication, perhaps we stop that medication. If it's an infection, then we need to treat and resolve that infection. From a nursing care perspective, we are going to do reorientation in both cases. However, reorientation only works very well with early or mild dementia. Reorientation is great for clients that have delirium, and for both clients, safety is a big concern. Now, in moderate to severe dementia, reorientation is very difficult be because we have this chronic, almost perpetual state of confusion, so maybe we're using validation therapy. 
And then in both, we really do want to foster communication. However, commonalities are safety, safety, safety. That is your biggest probably priority concern as a nurse. So keeping these patients safe. Okay, so what are the risk factors for cognitive impairment? Certainly advanced age. Now it is important to note that dementia is not a normal physiologic change of aging. Brain tumors can certainly be a risk factor at any age. Uh, brain tumors, hypoxia, stroke, those are diseases or disorders that can result in impaired cognition. Exposure to environmental toxins, and we even see this in children, um, excessive lead exposure, especially over a prolonged period of time, can result in cognitive decline. Genetic conditions, we do know that there are definitely some genetic conditions in which there is a diminished intellectual um, functioning. Depression can cause impaired cognition. And then therapeutic uses of opioid steroids, certain psychiatric drugs, general anesthesia, especially when we use these in older adults. And then of course, fluid and electrolyte balances, particularly dehydration, but certainly we can see it with fluid volume overload as well. Now there are some physiologic and psychologic consequences of impaired cognition. So clients can lose their short-term and or their long-term memory. Of course, disorientation to both or to person, place, and time. Um, it could be one, all, um, or just a few of those that the client is disoriented to. We see impaired reasoning, impaired decision making ability, impaired language skills, so aphasia, the diff uh, difficulty communicating, and uncontrollable or appropriate, inappropriate emotions. Now, we often see that in clients with dementia, right? We can see it in delirium too, but in dementia, we, uh, dementia, we often see excessive anger, excessive agitation and aggression. And sometimes we even need to treat those symptoms with other uh, psychiatric medications. And then sometimes we will see delusions and hallucinations. Now for assessment of cognition, a good health history is going to be really important. And that might can come from the client, but because of the disorientation component of cognitive disorders, this might need to come from a family member. A good mental status assessment, Diagnostic imaging, such as a brain MRI to detect trauma, lesions, tumors, and then neuropsychological testing. Now, when we think about a mental status ass assessment, one of the more common uh, assessment tools that we use is the mini, mini mental status exam. And so this measures orientation and cognitive function. The maximum score is a 30 and anything less than 21 is going to indicate some degree of cognitive impairment and does require further evaluation. When we hit 24 to 21, that is significant or indicative of mild dementia. 20 to 10, indicative of moderate dementia, and anything less than nine is indicative of severe dementia. Now, some of the sample questions that you might ask a client when you're doing a mini mental status exam is, what is the date? And that is going to uh, assess for orientation. Do you know where you are? What is the date? Who is the president today? Registration. This is where you might say, listen carefully. I'm going to say three words and then you're going to repeat them back to me. Okay, ready? Here they are. And you say three words and then you have the client repeat them back to you. Now, naming is another um, assessment on the mini mental status exam. So you might ask the client to point to a very common object. So, you know, you might hold up a pen and say, what is this? Or you might say, point to the television. And then reading, you might actually have the client read something that's written on a piece of paper and then actually do what it says. So on the piece of paper, it might say, you know, take off your socks or turn on the TV. And then you have the client do what is actually on that piece of paper. And those are just some samples. Here, of course, is the mini mental status exam, and you can see all of the questions, how they're scored, and examples um, of how we do use this assessment. Okay, and then finally, how do we promote health when it comes to cognition? So the main thing is to avoid risk factors such as substance use and head trauma. So anything that we can do to avoid head injury or um, substance uh, use disorders is going to help prevent cognitive decline. Uh, we also want to teach older adults to continue to stimulate the intellectual part of their brain through new learning activities, even after they've retired and as they age. Now, other interventions that that we might do uh, for a client that is cognitively impaired. Again, remember primary goals, preventing injury, fostering communication, safety, communication, 
primary nursing goals. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you today related to cognition. Hopefully you enjoyed this video in the core concept series. If you have a comment or a question, please do leave those in the description box below. However, if you would like to reach out via email or Twitter, and I'm now also on Instagram at the Professor RN, please do so. I am posting daily on those social media platforms. Have a wonderful day.